Hello, this is Matt Singleton, and welcome to Bible. Alright, uh, I'd like to read this passage to you. This is Isaiah chapter 5, starting verse 20. Woe unto them! They call evil good, and good evil. They put darkness for light, and light for darkness. They put bitter for sweet, and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes, and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine, and men of strength to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked for reward, and take away the righteousness of the righteous for him. May God bless the reading of his word. Um, a friend of mine asked me if I would uh, give some uh, comments to um, a local church in my city called Highland Baptist Church. Uh, Highland Baptist Church is going to make some headlines because they plan this June to perform the first uh, gay marriage uh, legally in Kentucky. Um, and let me go ahead and just say that, like, you know, as I said, this, uh, this is going on, you know, in my city. And um, I do have a little bit of experience with the Highland Baptist Church. I've not attended. But, um, basically, um, it is not very far from the Bible college I went to, and, um, I, uh, have met people, um, one fellow that I met for a while was a member there, and, um, he was a, uh, I guess he would say he, he was homosexual, I don't, I don't know if that was open or not, but I'm not going to mention his name. Um, but basically, he recalled something to me. An experience that he had, not at the church, but um, basically when he was a, a young uh, toddler, he was brutally raped uh, for several years and um, molested. And basically, um, you know, that affected his relationship with also with other, other little boys and stuff like that, uh, and his family and everything, and really caused him a great deal of psychological harm and damage. Um, when we deal with uh, groups, uh, people um, with the subculture of homosexuality, you deal with uh, whether or not, you know, they want to admit to it, a lot of them have been heavily, heavily abused, heavily uh, psychologically damaged and hurt and just gone through some horrific experiences. And it's important to know this because... Um, it's easy to uh, stereotype and villainize and all that kind of stuff. But basically, um, you know, I, I do understand that, you know, especially if you get a large group like that of homosexuals, you're talking a lot of people who've got a lot of wounds and have been through things that a lot of people would never dare to want to go through. Uh, so I want to give respect to that, okay? But, um, basically, at the same time, um, it's easy for people to diagnose a problem. Totally different thing to diagnose a solution. And, um, Highland Baptist Church, I mean, historically it was a Baptist church, and, you know, some of the churches that started are heavily hardcore fundamentalist churches now, you know, so, uh, it, it is kind of interesting how things kind of turn out over time. But basically, um, you know, Highland would not be considered a, you know, right-wing conservative church, <laughs> you know. Uh, I think it uh, kind of associated itself with a uh, liberal wing of the Southern Baptist Convention and then left the Southern Baptist Convention for a um, more, you know, liberal fellowship. But um, basically, um, you know, in taking this move... Um, you know, I do want to tell uh, those of you who are involved in that movement um, that there are things that I think that, you know, you might want to consider, um, not only from the Bible, and we'll talk about that, but also just uh, as a matter of wisdom, you know, if you do hold yourself to be Christian and stuff. Um, and I was going to also say... Um, experience with Highland was um, 
they had a, a member of their clergy um, protest about a year or two ago, uh, maybe about a year and a month or two, and basically um, he went down to get a marriage license. Our state has a uh, um, traditional marriage amendment, so we do not give out marriage license for anyone who is not, you know, getting actually married. Okay, and you know, marriage is one man, one woman. And so basically, um, he didn't get it. So what they decided to do in protest was after uh, the county clerk's office was closed, then they would just stay there and wish they would get trespassing. And so basically they stayed there, they trespassed, and then the guy was like, okay, well, I'll just give you a ticket. And he's like, no, I want to be booked. I want to go to jail. So they're like, okay, fine. You really want to go to jail? I'll take you to jail. Um... Now, what I did was I felt very strongly about traditional marriage. I understand a need, especially for, you know, a culture like that to protect homosexuals. But I have a need to protect um, families, okay? Uh, I care about families. I care about the uh, children and families that they have a proper upbringing. Um, and I want families to stay together. And um, I want a government who's not attacking families. So, with that said, uh, basically I wanted to debate the issue. So I went up to there and, um, you know, um, this nice woman, like an old woman with a flat top, I, she uh, told me that he was not there. I came up a little bit later, asked again, I gave all my information, still nothing. I did debate the issue. I found somebody from uh, Indianapolis. I, couldn't find anybody. Uh, talked to some guy from the fairness campaign, but then they just kind of um, chickened out or something. But nevertheless, um, basically, um, you know, we dealt with that. And, um, you know, the thing is, is that um, in the article in the newspaper, you know, they start talking about, you know, we care about justice and morality, and I was wanting to do the right thing. That's what the guy said. Um, and he went by the moniker uh, Bojangles. That was his nickname. But, um, you know, he said he wanted to do the morally right thing. He cared about justice and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, when we start talking about marriage, um, you know, people want to say, well, it's all in how you define it. No, it's not how I define it. It's about how God defines it. You know, we're not... Once you start bringing in morality... You're not talking about this little blank government and equality because we're all, you know, religiously li liberated and all that stuff. But what, what we're talking about is, you know, what it really is, what reality is. Uh, reality is that God is in control, that God is on his throne, that God is, you know, not only real, but he's necessarily existent. And um, you can't just change reality because you feel differently. So, you know, once again, going back to it, um, is gay marriage holy matrimony? Is it holy and set apart unto God? Now, a lot of um, homosexual, pro-homosexual theologians have made the argument that Jesus never uh, talked about uh, homosexuality. And, you know, I, I could find some places where it's implied, but we don't have, like, necessarily, you know, a big outright, you know, hey, I'm Jesus, and here's what I have to say about the gays. Um, so that's, that, that's fair, but this issue, no, this is something our Lord talked about, which was uh, the institution of marriage. Let me see if I can find that here real quick. I believe it's in... Uh, Book of Matthew, and okay. It says this, and I'll just start at this verse. Uh, this is verse seven of Matthew nineteen. 
It says, they say unto him, Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement to put her away? And he saith unto Moses, um, he saith unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of, his, of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives, but from the beginning it was not so. Let me back up a little bit. Um, they ask, is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? And he, that's Jesus, answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? So you have this distinction. He's, he's made two things. Two things that are very important. We need to celebrate that. We need to celebrate male and female. He said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they, the twain shall be one flesh. Wherefore, they are no more twain, but one flesh. Um, what therefore God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. Now, when we talk about marriage, it is not two bodies, two humanoids, two intelligent sentients, or whatever. It is the man and the woman. It's not a baby boy or baby girl. You know, he says he leaves his father and mother as an adult. And it is a equation that they become one flesh when it's male and female, when the two become one flesh. We know about uh, Ephesians chapter 5, which likens the groom unto Christ and the church unto the uh, bride. Um, there is a groom, there is a bride. There are two different identities. Um, you could probably have a ceremony joking about that. You know, maybe we'll have the groom and the groom, or the bride and the bride, or maybe one will dress up like the groom and one will dress up like the bride. But it gets even deeper than that because one body, you know, the female is supposed to change her name. Now, is this... Uh, you know, in a lesbian marriage, is that where they're supposed to both change their names, just switch off together, kind of go off like that? You know, are the men going to keep their names? Um, now, that sounds goofy, but if we're really thinking God is behind this, then, you know, we might want to actually answer the questions properly. Okay? Um, this is real. And you think, well, that sounds goofy. Of course it sounds goofy because it's not the plan. You know, marriage is about the two becoming one flesh to create a family and procreate. Now, I've seen gay rights agenda um, material that says, ha, 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 no, it's not. It's about people having feelings. That's boyfriends and girlfriends. Or boyfriends and boyfriends or whatever, okay? Yeah, you can have your this-is-for-pleasure relationships, but that is not what a family is. A family is permanent, so does God want um, two couples, let's say two homosexuals, to be forced, committed for the rest of their life to their homosexual lifestyle? Okay. Um, these are serious things about how to create a family. And obviously, there is no intent. If you marry somebody of the same sex, there is no intent to create a family. Okay, because you're not going to produce offspring. Now, we could argue about uh, adoption. We could say, hey, we can make this look right. Now, I do believe in religious liberty. I believe that if you want to say, hey, we're going to you know, call this marriage, and we're going to get together, and we're going to do what we want to do, and say that our God is for it, okay, you do what you want to do. But what you're asking for is you're not asking for that. You're asking to force the government and therefore to force the culture to do what you want and to believe as you believe and never to, you know, descend away from that. Once again, it happens to be a Baptist church. That's not the Baptist faith. 
The Baptist faith is not about some communism or forcing the government to do anything. The Baptist faith is Jesus saying that my kingdom is not of this world. That you're of a separate and a holy kingdom. So assuming that what you're doing is morally right, you should have no problem with other people not living up to your standards. Okay? But, in doing this, uh, we have a system in our government that allows for freedom. Now, what this was, is this was the government saying, hey, families, we want to help you out. And so what we'll do is we will give you a tax break. But if we change the definition of marriage, then, you know, you say, well, we can extend the tax break. But then eventually the whole definition will fall apart. And, you know, you say, well, whatever, that's not fair. Look, once you have gay marriage, then somebody's going to say, hey, look, I'm single. Why don't you give me a tax cut? I could have kids one day. I could adopt kids one day. The definitions are changing. And once you, once you really change definitions of words, then it, it, it never really matters. Uh, right now, um, this last December, they decided to not worry about the polygamy ban anymore. So, you know, some guy is like really cheering right now because he can go from one state to the other and fool some woman into a relationship and have his little life over here and have his little life over there and have his little life over there until they all end up realizing that it's only one guy and he ain't got that much money. So who are they going to go run into? The government. And then they're going to take our tax money for it. You see, there's no standard anymore. All the standards are gone now. And you say, well, you know, it's unfair. Everybody deserves to be married. Okay. But you don't want to get married. You want to change the definition. All right. Don't think I didn't forget that. Okay. Because, yes, there are plenty of homosexual people who, for some reason, get into traditional marriage. All right. And, you know, whether I agree, whether I disagree, not as big a deal to me because I don't think it's a genetic anomaly. Okay, um, you may think that, all right, well, these people are genetically forced to this certain genetic lifestyle. But genetics is not what determines morality. Okay, if I look at animals, and I've heard this argument, that there's gay animals. There's also cannibalistic animals. Should I go ahead and eat people? You know, is that okay now because I saw animals do it? You know, there are animals that just go around killing everybody. There are animals that do mass suicide. You know, hey, the lemmings are doing it. Why can't your community do it? You know, no, that's ridiculous. And that's where, I mean, this all goes back into the whole thing of ridiculous. I mean, it keeps on going there. You know, they say, well, it's all about monogamy, okay? Well, let me ask you something. Aren't you a bigot for saying that three men who love each other can't get married? Okay? What is the stop? If two men can get married, what stop three men from getting married. Okay? I, I really don't see the point. Three men, four women, 576. Does it really matter? See how the logic is just taken out of it. Okay? And once you get to that level where it's like, hey, there could be three men married, then what is the issue about children? They say, well, they're not old enough to cooperate. Well, you can get a child to say that they want to do something. Um, the other issue is, is that in the 1972 gay rights platform, on the state level, they wanted to get rid of all age distinctions. See, a young child is not ready to have children. But a young child, you could say, if they're going to have sex that has not the consequence of having children, then why not? They say, well, that's abusive, or that's not, you know, helping them out mentally. But there's lots of these behaviors that are arguably not healthy mentally, okay? Personally, I think that if somebody, and it's just personal opinion, okay, so there's a rule, but I'm saying if you've had, you know, a dozen, 20 partners or more, it's probably going to hurt you mentally, emotionally, and stuff like that. 
because there is a bonding that takes place. And when that bonding is taking place and it's not meant to take place, then there are problems. But well, let's go back to the legality of it. Okay. Um, Kentucky has a federal marriage, not federal marriage, sorry. It has a state marriage amendment, a uh, very strict one, and it was voted on by 75% of the population. That's an overwhelming number. I mean, it's a big number for any Democratic vote to actually be that high. And it wasn't long ago. It was like 2004. Okay? So the will of the people was not for this to happen. But we say a federal judge. Federal judges don't work for the state. It's the state constitution. You look at our constitution, the, the traditional American constitution, the Tenth Amendment says anything not in the um, uh, first eight articles are off limits. In other words, the state has the authority there, not the federal government. Okay? And we say, well, we found something in the 14th Amendment and we're going to apply it over to the states. What you're going to do is you're going to say that any time America comes up with a constitutional amendment that's added on afterwards can be imposed on everybody regardless of their supposed rights. All of a sudden, the right to spe free speech is up for grabs. Your rights to free speech, your rights to private property, your rights to guns and self-defense, all of it's up for grabs now. It's really nice that you, that you decided you'd twist this just because you can because of popularity's sake, right? Well, then what happens? You see, the pendulum swings back and forth. And what's swinging to the left right now is going to swing right back to the right. So what happens when you've destroyed the integrity of the Constitution? What kind of amendment are they waiting to put on you? Um, when you look at the history of world civilizations dealing with the issue of homosexuality, it always hits a peak and then gets wiped out and destroyed. What God talked about with Sodom and Gomorrah was this thing where it gets pushed Again and again, the limit has to keep on getting pushed again and again. And so as a result, lawlessness takes place. And once lawlessness takes place, then every all society falls apart in a massive bloodbath. Okay? And empire after empire has fallen. Now, many of you watching this, okay, if I've got the audience, okay, but... Many of you who are members of that church are watching this may say, I'm not a criminal. Just because I have a private issue doesn't mean you have the right to judge me. I understand that, but could you please understand reality? Do you understand to impose your views is going to open the door for people who are predators? Predators who may have hurt yourself. That's what happens. Almost kind of like the gremlins. You know, they're really cute and cuddly, but then some of them get fed after midnight and they turn to monsters. There's got to be something done about that. Do you want that on your head? Do you want families destroyed for your sake? Knowing that a Christian way is to be humble. Okay? In other words, you could say, look, I'm going to have this for my private life. You could buy a ring. You say, hey, we're married. You don't have to force the government to go along with you. In fact, that's kind of like the Baptist way of things, is that we live our own lives and let the government say what it's going to do. You can vote. I'm going to vote. You can vote. But if we do not support freedom, then we will not have freedom. Eventually, it will all be gone. We have to be responsible. And going back to it, when we set before God, this lifestyle, personally between you and me, it's not going to work. It's not going to help. You say, oh, but I love so-and-so. They're the same sex as me, but I love them. Look, okay, I have friends who are the same sex, and I love them dearly. But love 
doesn't always have to equate sex. And that's why this does not work out with God's plan. But what does work out with God's plan is recognizing His holy word and realizing that He can be trusted to do what's best in your life.